Hey everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, aka MonoBlueTron, back again with another episode of 10 Minute Testing. So, in my eternal quest to find a Trickstar deck that doesn't make me want to shove my head into an elevator shaft, I've happened on a cute little brew that I figured I'd share with you today. And if here's a slightly less frustrating Trickstar deck isn't doing it for you, here's a tagline sure to get your jimmies rustling. It integrates an idea from my Orgoth Turbo list. I present to you, Food Chain Kaiju Trickstar. So here's the deck, and whoa boy, I am already sweating with jank. As always, I'll give you a little bit of background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and as always, the card by card. So firstly, for those of you that don't know, Trickstar is a deck that I have beaten to death, both on the quadrillion streams I've played and in paper. It's a hyper-consistent strategy that burns your opponent, disrupts hands, and occasionally hand loops. Unfortunately, as any seasoned Trickstar player will tell you, the small size of the engine means that often you're trapped with hands that do absolutely nothing. Be they a Licorice and nothing else, four hand traps and a reincarnation, or three Eater of Millions, the deck bricks easily. I'm attempting to follow in Pendulum Magician's footsteps and add a second linear engine to the deck. So, we've got three Venus and the Shine Balls in here as well. For those of you unfamiliar, Venus and the Shine Balls are a a series of cards that have become much more powerful since Master Rule 4, as they are fantastic for making Link monsters. With just a Venus, we can easily make a 4 material Saruya Skull Dread. What we're aiming to do with that is set a Kyoto Waterfront, link up into Saruya, add a Gamsiel to hand, special summon him in defense, and get a couple dozen of negates ready. The Food Chain half of the deck refers to Transmodify and Downbeat, which aim to take advantage of Trickstar's advantageous typing and level flexibility to work up and down the Food Chain, and always ensure you're able to find Venus. Venus. Playing 9 copies of Venus feels a lot better than playing 3. Candina either represents a downbeat target or a Lilybell special summon for a transmodify rank up. In essence, we're losing almost nothing since the innate power of the Link toolbox means we can now take out the big threats that we used to reserve Eater of Millions for, and as magicians have begun to eschew hand traps, I think we can reevaluate playing 9 as well. So with that, let's get into the card by card. First, we are playing a classic Trickstar suite. 3 copies of Candina, 1 copy of Lilybell, and 3 copies of Licorice. After that is the Venus Suite, 3 Venus and 3 Mystical Shine Ball. Finally, our Hand Trap of Choice, 3 Ghost Ogre. Now, while Droll is certainly phenomenal in Trickstar, I think Droll looping is something we're just not going to do in Game 1 very often regardless. Finally, we're playing 2 Kaiju, a Gamsiel, and a Dagoran, so we can occasionally use our next card, Interrupted Kaiju Slumber, anyway. We're also playing a Regeki, 3 Scapegoat, 3 Trickstar Light Stage, 1 Kyoto Waterfront, 3 Terraforming, and 1 Set Rotation. Finally, we have our Food Chains, 3 Transmodify, and 3 Downbeat, and 3 Reinforcement incarnations to round out the list. In the extra, we've got a Boralode, a Saruya, a Firewall, a Decode Talker, both Ningirsu and Eeb, a copy of Mrs. Radiant, Proxy Dragon, Trickstar Holly Angel, Binary Sorceress, Akashic Magician, Imduck, and three Link Spiders. So with that, let's jump into the games. Our first match is up against Galaxy, playing the new Light Link Monster, so that's exciting. And while certainly not Tier 1 by any stretch of the imagination, this game does a pretty good job of displaying how this deck in particular transitions from an early game dominated by Gamsiel and Saruya to a late game dominated by the Trickstar card's inherent advantage tools. We're going to start by normal summoning this copy of Venus, always nice to see in our opening hand, especially when there's no Shine Balls attached. We'll go ahead and activate her effect three times, then set a copy of Kyoto Waterfront and start Link Summoning. We're going to go ahead and go into a Link Spider. Afterwards, we'll go into a Binary Sorceress, and no real reason to make anything but a 3-mat because our hand is basically perfect already. We're going to go ahead and Special Summon this Gamsiel in Defense Mode and pass it back to our opponent. They're going to activate a copy of a Cell Light. Now I want three Negates up, so I'm going to let the next card, a Photon Sanctuary, resolve, which turns out to be a little bit of a problem. They're going to go ahead and Special Summon a Guardian of Order, followed by the new Light Link Monster, which gives the Guardian of Order enough attack to get over our Saruya. Now I'm trying to think, oh, I mean, how am I going to get over this? Is it time to already go into Lily Bell shenanigans every turn? I figure I might as well attack over the Hyper Star at the very least, and then we'll tag out for a Licorisca in defense mode and decide what we should do next, because of course, they cannot get over our defense position Gamsiel. They're going to start by attacking over our Licorice, and suddenly I realize that that Guardian of Order is in a very interesting zone. Let's go ahead and use Candina to get a second copy of Licorice to our hand, and then and tag both of them in for her. Then afterwards we can go into a uh, Akashic Magician, return that to the hand and get in for 1700. That's pretty choice, but of course we don't have any way to win the game outside of Lily Bell Tricks. Our opponent's going to start by special summoning a Cyber Dragon and beating over our Akashic Magician, then passing it back. I'm recognizing they've lost basically all tools necessary for this game to function. We'll go ahead and use Candina's effect to get Lily Bell and get the beats in. We'll start by attacking over the Cyber Dragon with the Gamsiel, then get in for 1800 with the Candina, 800 for the Lily Bell, and 1600 with the Lick 
Icarus that we're adding back to our hand. So our opponent is almost dead, and thankfully they have just a few things left in their hand. They'll start by activating this copy of Cyber Dragon, followed by Trade-In, which we can negate for a sweet two for one. Afterwards, they're going to attack over our Candina, and then in main phase two, I figure, eh, let's just negate everything they play. They can't possibly have three things that matter, and it turns out they only have two. After I negate this Monster Reborn, they're going to set one card and scoop it up. Our second match is up against Grenmaju OTK, so we've graduated from something you would never see at any event to something you might find at Table 500. Our opponent has drawn... well? I, I have no idea what constitutes a good hand for this deck. I assume a hand that banishes things and has Grenmaju is good, but I, I would not know. Our hand is okay, but unfortunately doesn't line up particularly well against Dimensional Fissure because we need monsters to go to the graveyard to proc Kyoto Waterfront. Still, I think we are favored. Our opponent's going to start by activating this copy of Dimensional Fissure, setting one and activating Soul Absorption. I'm not a big fan of Soul Absorption in these style of decks. It doesn't do anything that Woboku wouldn't do better. We're going to go ahead and activate the effect of Trick Starlight Stage, prompting the Macro Cosmos and getting a Lily Bell from our deck to our hand. We're going to go ahead and use Agent of Creation Venus to special summon as many of these little balls as possible, then go into a Link Spider, gain him 500, gain him 1,000 for the Binary Sorceress, gain him another 500 for the Imduck, and end on a 4-mat Saruya. This is going to sculpt our hand into something relevant. These Ghost Ogres aren't particularly good when we can't send anything to the graveyard. Then we'll get ourselves a Candina, attack in for 2,800 and 2,100, then tag out for this copy of Licorice for another 19. And already we've mitigated all of the life point gain that this Soul Absorption has done. Woboku well, would have been better, just saying. Our opponent is going to draw into a copy of Lure of Darkness, which is interesting. They're first going to special summon this copy copy of Kumungus to our side of the field, then Normal Summon this copy of Grand Maju, which of course is at zero because it only counts your own. They're going to gain some life off of the failed Allure of Darkness, but unfortunately 1200 is not enough to win the game, and we have a Scapegoat set. Now I am excited to go out in style, because I have four materials on my side of the board again, I can go into a Borolo Dragon and beat them with their own Grand Maju. Despite drawing the Regeki, I think that's just a little more stylish, so we'll end on a Link Spider, Proxy Dragon, Link Spider, Borolo, which of course links to the two right and left most zones that allows us one zone necessary to take this Grand Maju, attack for 56, and our opponent concedes. Alright, so here are the good decks. Our opponent for round 3 is playing Trickstar, and this is exactly the type of hand I was talking about that caused me to reevaluate my deck composition. Of course, ours isn't particularly good. We have a copy of Agent of Creation Venus, which is excellent, but two mystical shine balls in the opener. Ah, oh, well, this is getting reincarnationed away anyway. Our opponent's gonna go first, and I mean, what do you do with this hand? They'll just pass it back. We draw into a set rotation, which is excellent news. We're gonna go ahead and activate this copy of Trickstar Light Stage, getting ourselves a Candina, and there's Droll and Lockbird, and there effect Veiler, so that's the end of our turn as well. They draw into a Cosmic Cyclone, which is pretty good news for them, because that set card is Trickstar Reincarnation. We will banish their entire hand, but unfortunately we draw them into just as much of a brick as they previously had. We'll start by activating Trickstar Light Stage, which prompts the Reincarnation. We're now out of Shine Balls, save for one, but that's probably fine. We'll Transmodify up into a copy of Candina, then Normal Summon her to add a copy of Reincarnation to our hand, attack into something defensive, Honest is fine, then set three and pass it back to our opponent. Our opponent draws into a Mind Control, which which is a very good card, but very reactive. They'll go ahead and take this copy of Trickstar Candina. We will Trickstar Reincarnation while they still have something in their hand to Reincarnation, and they'll end on Baguska. We'll flip a scapegoat, and whew, they will just concede. Our fourth match is up against Pendulums, and this is a very interesting take on the list. It's playing a lot of the Odd Eyes stuff, but of course is still on 3 Astrograph, 3 Chronograph, and 3 Electromite in the extra deck, so at the very least the plays will be mostly familiar. We've drawn almost exclusively Trickstar cards. This replay just goes to show that we're not playing so much chaff that we can't still play Trickstar. We're going to go ahead and activate this copy of Terraforming so we can get a Trickstar Light Stage to our hand, use that to get a Candina, use the Candina to get a Reincarnation, and tag out for two copies of Trickstar Licorisica. Afterwards, we're going to set three, and I get a little greedy here. We're going to go ahead and try and use these Trickstar Reincarnations for disruption. Our opponent's going to take a whole bunch of damage in their draw step. Boy, this is fun to sit through. Then activate a copy of Odd Eyes Mirage Dragon and Duelist Alliance. That is prime time for me to flip these reincarnations. We will go ahead and do so, and though we do a little bit less damage than we would have if we had just activated them in the draw step, I think it's still worth it to do 1200 per Trickstar Licorisica along with the stage activation. They end up at a healthy, I think, under 2000 points of health, which means that we're going to be able to easily kill them next turn with our Trickstar Lily Bell. They're going to go ahead and get a Dark Worm out that adds a Supreme King Gate 0 to their hand, which means we can do a little bit more damage. They'll then flame strike both of my Licorisica, which is not a particularly big deal, set gate zero, destroy this copy of Mirage, set a Pendulum Dragon, 
Pendulum Summon 1, go into Electromite, and from here on out they are just playing the Astrograph combo. They're going to go ahead and Special Summon Astrograph, get another copy of Pendulum to hand, attack in for 18 for 25, I am pretty measured here, and then once they go to end phase we will flip up this copy of Scapegoat, get 4 tokens, and end the game. From here on out, we can just style on them as much as we like. We're going to go ahead and go into a copy of Link Spider, a copy of Proxy Dragon, another Link Spider for a Borlo Dragon, then normal summon this copy of Candina. That's going to get us a copy of Lily Bell, which we will special summon immediately and attack directly for 800 and 200 additional points of damage. Well, we've had a pretty easy go of it so far, but unfortunately we are now playing against one of Trickstar's worst matchups, Light Sworn. Unfortunately, our hand trap of choice, Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, is going to do hot nothing here. We just have to hope they don't interrupt us. We're going to start by normal summoning a Candina, using its effect to get a Light Stage, and using that effect to get a Lily Bell. We will then activate Transmodify, and oh man, they held that Ash Blossom forever. I was sure they were going to Ash anything else in my hand, but they get a sick two for one for their patience. They're going to go through a couple of Lone Fire Blossoms, uh, nothing we can do about that and end on an Orpheus Scorpio. I don't want to Ghost Ogre this, but at the very least it stops Curious, which is I think more than I'm going to get from anything else. They'll then activate Brilliant Fusion, taking just a little bit of chip damage, which isn't going to matter unless we can follow it up with something big. A thousand off of the Trick Clown, and oh boy, here come the special summons. Whew, yikes. Well, the extra normal gets a Goblinberg, which gets a Spirit Master, which permits a format Skull Debt. They shuffle their deck so they have a copy of Snow in hand, which is terrible news for us. Afterwards, they're going to special summon this Raiden from their hand, and then mill two, one of which is a Snow. Through Banishes, they're going to be able to destroy our Candina with this copy of Spirit Master, bring it back with Solitaire, and set it face down with Snow in that order. Then afterwards, they can go to Amaterasu for more, rank 4 fodder, a Solitaire into a copy of Unizombie in this case, and then start attacking. So we're going to have to flip the scapegoat sub-optimally so we don't die. That's not great, because I know there's going to be at least one copy of Omega in my future, and I need to draw a monster so that I can make a format Link monster. Uh, but unfortunately, here comes the Mizuki, here comes the Gozuki sending another Mizuki. Here comes Omega number one. Here comes Mizuki banishing itself for the Gozuki again for Omega number two. Yikes. Okay, well, we got to draw exactly a monster, and there is one. So we can make a four material link monster here, but I don't know how good that's going to be, especially with the Ghost Ogre in hand. We'll go into a Bora load, but. Uh, God, there's just no reason to continue playing this game when my opponent has so much stuff that they can easily make a Bora load of their own. So, we're back with the deck. Uh, I had a blast with this. <laughs> it's got a couple of things going for it. Trickstar is already a ridiculous hand trap magnet, so with clever play, Venus can resolve pretty often. It's a sweet linear game plan, and Gamsiel is maybe the only multi-negator in the format completely immune to Kaiju. I honestly think it is less bricky than normal Trickstar, and if you feel that you have to play Disruption games 2 and 3, there's nothing stopping you from siding out this svelte 12-card engine for Drolls, Anti-Spells, Ashes, Kaiju, and board wipes, you unbelievable nerd. All in all, I'm very excited to start jamming this, and at the very least, it's more exciting than Droll Loops. So that's that. I hope you enjoyed my video aimed at making a deck worse, but more fun. If you want to see me play the decks I make on this show on stream, I'm on twitch.tv slash monobluetron every Tuesday and Thursday from 12 to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and if you have a certain idea for a deck or archetype you want to see on a future episode of this show, let me know in the comment section and I'll do my best. Otherwise, I'll see you Wednesday.